Hi everybody, it's me, Robin. Welcome to my teaser for my paper at the PetriNet Conference 2021, Firing Partial Orders in a PetriNet. I really love PetriNet, and I'll tell you why. Well, they look kind of cute. They have a formal definition and easy to use semantic. If we have a PetriNet, and we take a look at the firing sequence, and we want to know if this sequence is behavior of our PetriNet model, we take a look at the events, and then just fire the PetriNet accordingly, starting from the initial marking. And if every event is enabled, then the sequence is enabled, and then the sequence is behavior of our PetriNet. It's quite a stretch to call this an algorithm, but if you do so, well, let's assume the PetriNet is given and the input is a firing sequence, then deciding if the sequence is in the language of the net is in linear time. But if you really think firing sequences are cool, just go to the State Machine Conference. If you love PetriNets just like I do, you know they model distributed systems. And to model the behavior of distributed systems, you need partially ordered set of events. You need partial orders. Now, if you want to know if a partial order is in the language of a net, you need compact token flows. And then there's an algorithm deciding if it's in the language running in cubic time. It is really not that easy because you need to distribute and redistribute tokens all over the partial order. So in the paper, we take a look at partial orders and we try to just fire them brute force in the PetriNet. We want to know what is actually possible in linear time. We color all the places of the net and then we extract an initial marking. And then we put this initial marking onto the first initial event, producing a local marking at this event. Then we fire the event in its local marking to produce the next local marking. If we want to fire an event and it's not possible, because here in this example, its local marking is empty, we just mark the places that don't have enough tokens. But then we fire the event anyway to update the next local marking. If we fire an event and it's forward branching, then we produce a local marking and just push the marking to the first successor. Then we fire in this example A, B, D to produce this local marking. And again, if we fire the event labeled with E in its um, empty local marking, we need to mark the blue place because it misses a token. Then we update the local marking uh, in a preset of F to fire F and produce a final marking. We call this a multi-token flow, and then we prove in the paper that for the non-marked places, there are compact token flows. So for these places, the partial order is enabled. And we also show that's not lost for the marked places yet, because there are tokens at these places at forward branching events. And we also constructed a final marking. So now we set the three places to the final marking, then we flip the arcs of the net, we flip the arcs of the partial order, and then we construct another multi-token flow, but firing backwards. That gives us two more compact token flows, and we can remove these places, leaving us with one place. Now this last place will be handled by the compact token flow algorithm using cubic time. So in this example, we handled six of the seven places in linear time just by firing the partial order forwards and backwards, and only one place is left for the usual token flow algorithm.